uh, through uh, for all of our veterans and Veterans Day. Uh, so at this time, Brother Tim, will you uh, play this video? I didn't check his mic. It's on. Will you join me as we stand together and we'll ask our ushers to come forward. But as we stand together this morning, we want to go, first of all, to the Lord in prayer uh, for all of our veterans, for all those who have served, and remembering those who gave their life. Uh, and I'm glad today that we can, uh, we can lean and trust in the Lord. Uh, will you join me as we pray together? Father, God, we are so grateful this morning for a nation where we can freely call upon your name, God. God, we praise you for the men and women who have sacrificed their lives, sacrificed their, fa their time with their families, God, to serve this great country. Lord, that it would become, oh, Lord, what you have molded it, God, what you called it to be from the very beginning of our forefathers. A country, God, to honor your name and to lift you up, God, and to serve you. And Father, we just want to pray right now, God, for our country. Lord, God, but you know, Lord, where we are. God, you know exactly what we need, God, in this country today. God, we need it, Lord, like it was founded. A nation under God, Lord, that will follow you and, and, and God be obedient to you and allow your word to be our God and to be our light, Lord, and to lead us to where we need to be. Lord, I just want to praise you, God, today for your grace upon this land. Lord, today we pray, God, for our nation that you would return our heart by the word of God, by the power of the Holy Spirit, God. Lord, return us to where we need to be and we might honor you in everything that we do, God. That this may be a nation, one nation, under God again. Lord, we want to praise you, God, for all that you've done. Lord, in the last years, God, we have been, uh, they've tried to proclaim that we are not a Christian nation. God, we realize there's many things that are not Christian going on in this world because of Christians that need to step up. Lord, help us, God, to step up, raise the banner high, and glorify your name in everything we do. Father, we want to praise you. We want to honor you. God, we want to glorify you. And we want to tell you today we love you. Thank you for the freedom you've given us in this country. God, thank you for everyone who has served and is serving today. May there be a great revival through our military by people turning to you, by Gideon's giving the Bibles, Lord, by the opportunities that we have every single day, Lord, to share your word. May it be shared, God, and people come to know you. We give you praise, we give you honor, we give you glory for all your blessings. In Jesus' wonderful and holy name we pray. Amen, amen. God bless America, amen. Hey, well, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to have our song uh, while our ushers, uh, uh, we ask the blessing on the offering and to give God thanksgiving. We ask him to bless it, amen, while you pull it out of your pocket. Put it in the plate. Bless it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Y'all don't know what to do, do you?
Praise the Lord. Amen. All right. Yeah, we're going to give an offering while we sing. How's that? Praise the Lord. Amen. America the beautiful. Uh, you can also give online. Thank God for his blessings and uh, give God praise. Amen. Let's sing together. For amber waves of grain, for purple mountain majesties above the fruited plain, America, America, God shed His grace on thee and crowned thy good with. Brotherhood from sea to shining sea. Oh, beautiful for pilgrim feet, who stern in passion stress, a thoroughfare for freedom beat across the wilderness. God, men, thine every flaw, confirm thy soul in self-control, thy liberty in all. O beautiful for heroes, bloom in liberating strife, who more than self See more than life, America, America. May God thy gold refine till all success be noble as and every gain divine. Oh, beautiful for pain. That sees beyond the years, thine alabaster cities gleam undimmed by human tears. America, America, God shed His grace on thee and crown thy good. With brotherhood from sea to shining sea. Amen. Amen. God bless America. Y'all may be seated this morning. Let's pray for the choirs we sing. We're going to do He is able, and then we're going to do God's been good. God's been good, and He is able. Sing it to Him this morning. He is able. He is able more than able to accomplish what concerns me today. He is able more than able to handle anything that comes my way. He is able, more than able, to do much more than I could ever dream. He is able, more than able, to make me what he wants me to be. Jesus, your name, his power. Jesus, your name is mine. Jesus, your name will break every stronghold. Jesus, your name is life. 
Jesus, your name is healing. Jesus, your name gives sight. Jesus, your name will free every captive. Jesus, your name is life. Jesus, your name is holy. Jesus, your name brings light. Jesus, your name above every other. Jesus, your name. Jesus, your name is life. He is able, more than able, to accomplish what concerns me today. He is able, more than able, to handle anything that comes my way. He is able, do much more than I could ever dream. He is able, more than able, to make me what he wants me to be. He is able, more than able, to do much more than I could ever dream. He is able, he wants me to be to make me what he wants me to be what a promise God's been good God's been good in my life. I feel blessed beyond my wildest dreams as I go to sleep each night. Though I've had my share of hard times, though I sighed, he's always stood through it all. God's been good. God's been good in my life. I feel blessed beyond my wildest dreams as I go to sleep each night. Though I've had my share of hard times, by my side he's always stood through it all. God's been good.
God's been good in my life. I feel blessed beyond my wildest dreams as I go to sleep each night. Though I've had my share of hard times, by my side he's always stood through it all. Doing the course again. Oh, God's been good. God's been good in my life. I feel blessed beyond my wildest dreams as I go to sleep each night. Though I've had my share of hard times, by my side he's always stood through it all, through it all, through it all. God's been good. Has he been good to you this morning? Amen. Well, stand together in fellowship and tell someone how good he's been to you, what he's done for you this morning. Good job, man. Hey, uh, on that chorus, just sing out, because I had them uh, to turn you up where the car can hear you, where I can key in with you. Cool, man. Good job. Amen. You may be seated. If you would, uh, pray for Miss uh, Elizabeth as she comes up and sings for us, please. Yeah. I forgot your name. I forgot your name. Good job. Good job. I didn't turn it on. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. It will be. was redeemed only beauty remained my orphan heart was given a name my morning grew quiet my feet rose to dance when death was arrested and my life began oh your grace so free washes From my chains, I'm a prisoner no more. 
My shame was a ransom he faithfully bore. He canceled my debt and he called me his friend. When death was arrested and my life began. Oh, your grace so free washes over me. You have made me new now. Life begins with you. It's your endless love pouring down on us. You have made us new now. Life begins with you. Savior displayed on a criminal's cross. Darkness rejoiced as though heaven had lost. But then Jesus arose with our freedom in hand. That's when death was arrested and my life began. Oh, your grace so free washes over me. You have made me new now. Life begins with you. It's your endless love pouring down on us. You have made us new. With you. Oh, we're free, free, forever we're free. Come join the song of all the redeemed. Yes, we're free, free, forever. Amen. When death was arrested and my life began, we're free, free, forever we're free. Come join the song of all the redeemed. Yes, we're free, free forever. Amen. When death was arrested and my life began. When death was arrested and my life began. When death was arrested and my life began. Amen. How many of you remember when he set you free? Amen. Hallelujah. I praise the Lord uh, for God's goodness and thank him for the opportunity this morning. Uh, we have to celebrate that grace uh, that God has given us. And uh, just with the choir, uh, just a few minutes ago, I'm glad that God is good. Amen. How many of you, God's been good to you? Would you say amen? Hallelujah. I praise him this morning. I uh, give the Lord thanksgiving for all that God uh, has done already in our lives and uh, thank him for being so good to us. We just bless uh, the wonderful, uh, loving name of the Lord. Amen. I want, to I want you to take your Bibles and turn to Acts chapter number 11. Acts chapter number 11. Uh, again, all of these uh, notes uh, from as we have looked over these past uh, few weeks about what is a Christian is found there uh, in our app under under Sundays and sermon notes, uh, you can find all of those apps. I mean, all of the uh, notes and scriptures and all that uh, that that is there. Uh, but I want to say this morning, I am glad to be a Christian. Are you glad to be a Christian this morning? Amen. It is great to know that we have a Savior who knows who we are, who saved us, he redeemed us like this song we was talking about. I want to tell you, he made us, he, he took all of our sin debt and he made us completely free from sin. He made us free from sin's penalty. He made us free from sin's guilt. The Bible says in the book of Romans chapter number 8, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ. If you're in Jesus this morning, you need to recognize that he has taken all all of our sin, all of our guilt, and thank God he's given us a brand new life forever. Amen? Hallelujah. It's good to be saved this morning. As we look uh, this morning, we've been looking at what is a 
Christian. I want you to look at Acts chapter 11 and verse number 26. Again, how we're talking about being a Christian. There's three times how the word Christian is found in the Bible. One is here, Acts chapter number 11. Another is found in Acts chapter 26. And then the last time is found in the book of Peter in 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse number 16 where he says, I will not be ashamed to suffer how to be that Christian that will stand up how for the name of Christ. How many of you are glad today you can stand up for Jesus? Amen. I want you to look in Acts chapter number 11 and verse number 26. The Bible said, And when he had found him, he's talking about Barnabas finding Saul. He said, When he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with what? The church. Is it important to assemble as the church? The Bible said, And they taught much people. And the disciples, disciples are people who are learning and teaching others. And the disciples were first called Christians in Antioch. Or, or in Antioch, they are first, as the first place we hear the name Christian. What is a Christian? A follower of the Christ. A follower of the Messiah. Somebody who is following after Jesus. Uh, this morning we have uh, looked at a lot of different things uh, all over these past seven weeks of, or it's been a little more than seven weeks. I, I like how uh, we can put seven at C. So we've done this for three times on this one thing. Amen. But I want you to look uh, and think about what is a Christian uh, in today's world. Are there Christians today? Can there be Christians tomorrow? Listen, I want to tell you how we are not living in a time how when the church is to be dead, when Christianity is dead, because just as was sung just a minute ago, Jesus is alive and he's well. Amen? And so we are looking at being a Christian. A Christian is an action of faith in Christ. So it takes us, if we say we're a Christian, it is a follower. We are doing an action with Christ. So the label of Christian... It is applied to many things in this world today. Matter of fact, religions and religious activity try to hide under a, an umbrella of Christianity. There's many things that are hiding uh, that says, yes, we are a Christian, but do they line up with what the Bible says a Christian is? And that is where we are finding out what how the Bible says a Christian is. People uh, stand as a Christian, uh, but do not follow the Christ. There's lots of things we can look at this morning and a lot of directions we can go in religions in this world, but we are looking at what is a Christian. Uh, this has been told many times. It is still true today. Uh, if you are uh, in the U.S. Treasury and you are wanting to make sure that there's nuts, no, no counterfeit money that is going around, they do not study counterfeit. Because it can be made in many different ways. They only study the real thing. And so when you look at being a Christian, how we need to look at the real thing. Where do we get about being a Christian from? The Word of God. And so we're looking at what a Christian is according to the Word of God. The only way that something or someone is a Christian is if we are doing what? following Christ if we are not following Christ it is not Christian and we're looking that through how the Word of God Christianity will never cease can I just tell you something Christianity in this world will never fail the Bible says it like this the Bible lets us know in the book of Matthew that Jesus said that the church will prevail. The gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. I know we hear media and we see all the things that are going on in this world. We even hear some church statistics that say 90 and now they're even saying 93% of churches that are Christian are plateaued or they are in decline. Can I just let you know something? Jesus is still on the throne. And people are still going to follow Jesus as a believer. And I want to say glory to God in this day and hour. It's still alive. Amen. 
he is still alive and we still have Christianity in this world. Following Jesus comes from a choice we have made by conviction of the Holy Spirit against our sinfulness in our life. So we've understood something. Christianity has a beginning. It is when Jesus said, come and do what? Follow me. How we understand that what we believe as a Christian, it, it is that, that Jesus is the Son of God. How that Jesus is God come in the flesh. How that he died on a cross for our sins. How he was buried. But on the third day, what happened? He arose. We believe that. How we don't believe that because of tradition. We do not believe that just because history books said. How we believe it because it is found in the inspired, infallible word of God. Amen. And then we understand we are baptized into a new body as a believer. That new body is the church. It is Christ himself that the Holy Spirit baptized us into his body. Then we have boldness because that we are his and not ours anymore. Aren't you glad today you can rest in Jesus amen then we understand there's a battle that goes on and Satan wants to battle against who God is and he does that through God's people and then we understand something else that we are looking at this morning and that is the part of being beyond I want you to take your Bibles and turn to John chapter number 14 of the gospel of John chapter number 14 and we're going to stay close to the gospels this morning as we turn to the word and looking beyond it means to be at eternity and beyond to understand that we are saved how we know Christ is Savior and Lord so guess what on this earth, if you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you are as saved as saved can be. You don't get any more saved than him rescuing us from our sin and saving our soul and keeping us out of hell. He has saved us, amen? But as a Christian, there is that part of us walking and following after Christ. Listen to what he said, and it's found here in John chapter number 14 and verse number 12. He said, Verily, verily, I say unto you. Who's he talking to? Us. He's talking to us. Who's he talking to? He said, He that believeth in me. Do you believe in Jesus this morning? So he said, This word is to us. He said, The works that I do. How many of you believe what Jesus did in the Bible? Amen. He said, The works that I do shall he do also. Who is the he? Whoever believes. He said, I want to let you know that I'm alive in your life. And he said, and then he said, And greater works than these shall he do. Wow. God says, Church, I want to tell you something. You're not dead. You're not just saved to float through. I didn't just put you in a boat and hope you're going to end up in heaven one day. He said, I'm telling you at greater works that God has more for you, that God has given us the open door because, he said in verse number 12, because I go to the Father. That means the Holy Spirit has come, that now he lives in us, that we are saved for a purpose, that we're saved to be salt and light, that we are saved as a Christian to do the will of God. So guess what? We're not just following way off. We're not just following way behind and going to get to heaven one day. We're not just riding in the train and sitting in the caboose and, and one day we're going to land in heaven. No, God has made all of us an engineer as a believer and said, I want you to know I put you on the track and I want to do great things through your life. Every single one of us who are a Believer. So we've understood something. There is how that to eternity and beyond. We understand that beyond is happening while uh, we are here. We looked at in beyond there's life. Jesus said, I come to give life and give it more what? abundantly and then he said that loyalty he said I want you to take up your cross and follow me be loyal to me all through this world but I want to tell you this next part I want you to take your Bibles I turn to Mark chapter number 11 Mark chapter number 11 I want you to look at it with me Mark chapter 11 oh this is a place where we understand as a Christian we're to take a leap. It is easy to be in the easy chair. It is easy to say as a believer, someone else can do that. 
It is easy to say as those who are Christians to say, you know something, we looked at it last week, I'm just tarred. It is easy to say as a Christian, I know that will get done, but I'm just, I'm just, I just cannot do it. It is one of those things like last week we talked about in that loyalty where we just we unplug what is Christian in our life, but we still have everything that is worldly or secular in our life. There's a place of us trusting our heart and saying, God, I want to follow you in your word, and I want to have a leap beyond uh, where I am. Look at it in verse uh, number 11 and verse number 20, or chapter number 11 and verse number 22. And Jesus answering saith unto them, Have what? Faith in God. Here's what he said. Uh, He said, uh, For verily I say unto you, uh, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart. Uh, How do you not doubt in your heart? It comes by the word of God. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word. He said, And shall believe uh, that these things which he says shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. I want to say glory to God. Oh, God said, it is yours. Follow me. Take the step of faith. Look in verse 24. He said, therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. What did God say? You shall what? Have them. God said, I want to tell you where I am placing you uh, in faith. And that is the place to take a leap in your faith, to trust me with every single thing. Following Jesus, by the way, it's not a blind leap of faith. It's not something that we're just going uh, into the darkness with, but it is a trust in the Word of God and trusting every footstep as we follow Jesus as a Believer, Wow, believing Jesus to take us beyond in our faith just from our beginning of salvation, but to take us beyond. It's kind of like people who go uh, to the gym, and they're at the gym, and uh, they are, they're working out, uh, but they never, ever try anything extra. They walk on the treadmill at less than one mile per hour. Three years later, I am working out. Three years later. You know what happens in our Christian life? This right here. It's like, well, I'm saved. And I pray over my meal. And I just do these little things. I know I can have a checklist in my Christian life. God said, I want you to know something. I want you to go beyond I want you to step into the Jordan. I want you to step over all these things that are going on in your life and build your life. Let your life be a lot. If you are wanting to get a fit and you're going to join a gym somewhere, I don't know how many times I know gyms that love this when people pay every single month or every year and they never show up. That happens even our, and God said, uh, Jesus looked at his disciples and he said, you want to do great things? Here they are. Uh, This is what you do. This is how you pray. This is how you trust. And God will do great things in your life. It is going beyond. Oh, there's a, I have way more than I can cover. So here's what I need. Can y'all help me out just a minute? I want y'all to listen in hyper speed. Can y'all do that? I want you to look with me and see this leap. Can I just tell you something about this picture? This guy had to step out. This lady, guy, whatever it is, had to make a motion in their life. Everybody else is standing still. Do you know something? If no one else is serving, why don't we serve anyway? Say, yeah, but uh, this is happening. None of my friends, uh, none of my family, none uh, of my co-workers, none of the people in church. It does not matter who else is doing it. Take a leap and say, God, I want you in my life. I want to give you just a couple scriptures. One is our course of life is where we are. Second uh, Corinthians 5 and verse number 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a what? 
new creature. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. We understand whenever you begin to follow Christ, you have a brand new course of life. It is not the same. And I want to say glory to God. I'm glad it's not the same. I'm glad I don't have to live in the sin and ungodliness and wickedness I was in. But glory, there's a brand new life that's found in Jesus. Oh, there's a new course of life. When I look at this new course of life, there's some things we need to do on this course. Number one, it's found in 1 Corinthians chapter number 11 and verse number 26. We talked about baptism. We've talked about other things that happen in the church, tithing, all these other things that we've looked at in a Christian life. But what about remembering Jesus? The Bible says it like this. Peter, he says it. He said, I put you in remembrance to stir you up, to stir that gift up. Paul says it to Timothy. I've come to bring your remembrance so he can stir us up. But Jesus said it this way. And it's in 1 Corinthians chapter number 11. Paul, by the heart of the apostle Paul, God gives us a message about remembering Christ and remembering him every single day of our life. But specifically at this time in our life, he tells us in verse number 24, he said, And when, you, when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take eat, this is my body, which is what? Broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Verse number, as you look at verse number 25, after the same manner also, he took the cup and when he had subbed, saying the cup is the New Testament in my blood, this do you as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. Then he said in verse number 26, he said, for as oft as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death until he comes. Our course of life, should be remembering that Jesus died for us. When you take of the Lord's Supper, what we call the Lord's Supper communion, it is not salvation. There's no saving in the bread. There's no saving in the juice or the wine. There is no salvation in that at all. Jesus said, I want you to do it because you love me, because you remember what I did for you, how you remember that I was broken for every sin, that I gave my life for you. And in this course of life, as a Christian, we are to remember what Jesus has done for us. You ever thought whenever you are tempted to sin, Jesus died for that sin. You ever thought, wow, should I, should I step out and do uh, this sin? Because here I am. Oh, when I look at this sinfulness in my life, Jesus gave his life for my sin. That remembrance. But the Bible also tells us about in our life as a Christian, our new course of life, not only remembering the Savior, but also a resemblance of him. I've used this verse of scripture when we look at the boldness, but it's found in Acts chapter 4 and verse number 13. It's a place where uh, we have Peter and uh, they have been in jail. Uh, and as they come out, uh, they, they said, Oh, we look at these men. We understand something about these men. Oh, that they have been with Jesus. Can I ask you something today? How much of my life resembles my Savior? How much of my actions look like Jesus? How much of my talk sounds like Jesus? How much of what I do in my life looks like what Jesus would do in his life? The Bible lets us know, oh, that in this course of life, we are to resemble him. The Bible says it like this about you and I. Look at your neighbor right now and say, yes, about you. Look at him right quick. Wake him up and look at him. Some of them might be in a bacon coma, Amen. He said this, we're an epistle read of all men. So how we live, how we act, it's showing and telling, and it is being read of all. Does that say that we love Jesus and that we are a Christian on the course of life that will honor the name of Christ? As we are looking beyond, the greatest thing you and I have is our testimony. The Bible says in the book of Revelation, they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. The word of God in our life that has changed us, we should resemble him living beyond. There's a leap in our life. I want to tell you, friend, when you and I understand what God is doing and calling us to as a Christian, there is a, you may not be in the fishbowl with everybody. 
You may not stand and be one of those that is doing what everyone else is doing. It takes a leap. It takes a leap of faith. It takes a stepping out. It takes a being renewed. It takes that part of having the boldness of God in our life. I want to tell you, we are living in a world. Can y'all hear me really good? We're living in a world where the things of the world have crept into the church and people live in the church like people live in the world and that is without Christ, and without, a, without a walk of Christ and a testimony of Christ, we become socially acceptable to everything, everything coming and going just in the name of tolerance. Listen, we have people that are that, that in their life they believe that it is okay to sin and do sinful things and still be okay. Can I just tell you, it's time to take a leap. Get out of the stinking fishbowl, amen? Anybody ever had a fishbowl before without a filter on it? Praise the Lord, ain't that a blessing? Everybody should bring a gold hit, goldfish home from the county fair, amen? Listen, when you look and you understand what is going on, our world is in a mess of rottenness to the core of sin. I don't want to be in it, amen? Oh, listen, get out, get out, step out, leap forward for what God has for you. You don't have to, you don't have to drink. You don't have to do drugs. You don't have to be in pornography. You don't have to walk in the course of this world. Glory to God, there's a Savior. Oh, who wants to change our life? There's that leap in our life. I want you to look at it with me. And it's found, I want you to take your Bibles now and turn to Luke chapter number 14. Luke chapter number 14. Wow. There is a leap in life. Here is our leap. You want to know why today our world is like our world is? It is because of what we have not done. How Christians, people that know Jesus, have we trusted Jesus as Savior? If you're a Christian, have you trusted Jesus as your Savior? Then it is not uh, that uh, because we trusted him, but what are we doing Beyond that, I want you to look in Luke chapter number 14 and verse number 23. Luke 14 and verse 23. The Bible said, And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. What did he say go do? Compel them. That word compel, it simply is, it is a word how that means that it is a, it, to necessitate that every single day I go, I realize that I have a, a purpose and that is to compel others. It is to compel them to Christ. That word compel, it means to, to constrain them. It means also by distress. Okay, let's say today that there is a, there is a pond that is out on some vacant property, there's a pond that is there. And you just happen to be out where this pond is, and there's, there's a, a, you see a kid that is walking around this pond, and all of a sudden they fall in and they cannot swim. Are you going to be compelled to do something? Yes or no? Okay, let's change the scenario. Let's say we are out on a vacant property somewhere uh, where there used to be a pond, but it is years gone by. It has grown up. Uh, we can tell it was a pond, but uh, now it is all grown over in the bottom of it with grass, and, uh, and you have, uh, you've you walked down it before, and you realize there's no, it was just an old uh, pond basin, and, uh, and it's just there, and uh, all of a sudden you, uh, you see this child that you've never seen before, and he goes down into that pond. Are you worried about that child? He can't swim. There's no water. You know what's happened to us as Christians? We've forgotten to compel them to go with necessity to understand. We thought, well, it's just dried up. They got more time. There's really not any water in it. And, you know, I know they're, man, I know hell's real, but, man, there's so much for me to do in life. I've got so much going on that, man, I really just don't even have time to even think about compelling somebody. The Lord said, compel them to come in at my house may be filled. Wow, there's two things 
and compel that God gives us. One is found, I'm just going to give them to you. One is found in Mark chapter number 16. Can I just let you know something? If serving Christ, what we call serving Christ, has got in the way of us compelling others, we are not serving Christ. Christianity says, I realize that I've got to leap out from where I am and I've got to get in, get someone. I'm leaping out because I know somebody that needs to follow. I know somebody that needs the Christ. I know somebody that needs Jesus in their life. Mark chapter 16 and verse number 15 says, uh, Jesus giving this to his disciples as he is about to leave this world. He said, I want you to go and preach the gospel to every creature. Wow. Can I, I want to ask a simple question. This is, this is as simple as simple can be. Have you invited anybody to church within the last seven days? I'm not talking about talking about salvation, getting deep in scriptures, but just, just, just compelling them. Would you come to church with me on Sunday? That place of compelling gets us to this place right here that we need to reach them. Do you have somebody in our life this morning that right now while you're sitting here with your phone in your hand or your phone in your purse or you've got it somewhere on your person, if you saw their name come up right this minute and somebody is texting you saying, I am using so-and-so's phone, I have found them this morning in their home dead. And you have been with that person this week and we did not compel them. How would that change us? I want to tell you something about all of us. It has happened in some way, form, or shape if you've been saved any length of time. That place of reach. We forget as a Christian, there's nobody else going to reach them. It don't matter where they go. It don't matter what they do. It don't matter how many psychiatrists and psychologists they go to, how many doctor's visits they make trying to fix their life. It is a, it is a problem in, in our hearts with knowing Christ and then letting Christ heal our lives together. Oh, I want to tell you, we've got to reach them before they will ever be changed. And that reach comes from compelling them to come. And to know Christ, that reach. The Bible lets us know about them being redeemed. And you may know this scripture is found in Luke chapter 19 and verse number 10. For the Son of Man, if you know it, say it out loud. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. He came for this purpose to redeem us from sin, to save us. And so he's telling us as Christians, it is us. No one else is going to tell them it is us. I want to tell you something about where we are as a church. Every song we sing should be compelling people. Amen? Every song we sing should be compelling people. Every testimony we give should be compelling. Everything we do as a church is to compel people to come to know Jesus. Oh. When you look where he said in his word, he gives us that opportunity. Paul said it like this in the book of Romans chapter 9 and verse number 3. Paul said, I would even give my life if it meant that my family would be saved. He said it like this, I would even give my salvation away. That's how compelled he was that heaven and hell is real and a life with Christ is real. Moses said it like this. He said, God, he said, if it's me that you need rather than taking all of my people, just take me. Wow. When you see where it's going on, there's that need to redeem. I know people need stuff in life. I know people, we need clothes. We need food. We need all the things that we do as a church to try to help our community. But if it's not redeeming, it is not Christian. If it is not compelling, it is not Christianity. It is that place of saying, God, what have we done? I want to tell you why there is such a decline in churches as a whole. Because we have not done what God's word said. God said, compel them. I want to give you this last thing. And it's this. It's a real leap. Y'all ready to leap? Can I just tell you? It's that leap of faith. It's trusting God. It's knowing that when you follow him, he's going to take you to where you need to go. And it's this. 
You can take your Bibles. I want you to take your Bibles and turn to this last portion of Scripture. It's Matthew chapter number 28. This last part of Scripture, Matthew 28. And as we close this series on what is a Christian, Jesus tells us what we have to have. I want you to look at it. It is to be complete as a Christian. You ever felt like your Christian life is missing anything? You ever felt like sometimes, wow, I know I'm saved, but it's just like, I don't know, just something's missing. That's a good place for us to get in trouble in our life because we start seeking for something to make us feel different. I want you to look at these verses of Scripture and understand how a Christian is made complete. Jesus did this at the end before he ascends back up to the Father. Here's what he said in verse number 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in where? Earth. Are you his child? He said, I've given all power. I've got all power. Whatever you're facing, I've got the power. He has the power today. Amen. Look in verse number 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. And then Jesus said, Amen. Oh, it's that surely, truly this is the word, the complete life of a Christian is found when we follow Jesus in obedience. There's two things this morning in closing. Number one, that is to rely on him. Verse number 18 says, Jesus said, I have all power. How much power does he have? All power. The Bible says it like this in the book of Psalms, that all power belongs unto God. Christ is God in the flesh. Jesus has risen from the dead. Jesus has defeated death, hell, and the grave. Uh, Jesus has won every victory that will ever be won. He is, the, he is the one who is Savior of all. He's the King of kings. Jesus is King. Amen? And he said, I want you to know you are in my kingdom and I have all power. So as a, a follower of Jesus, we are powerless to be able to follow him without his power. I want to tell you what makes Christianity different than any other religion in the world. We are changed not by our choices, but by our Savior. He changes our heart. The Holy Spirit comes in and changes our desire. He forgives us of our sin. And we are empowered by Him. And He has all power. And He said, I want you to know I have given you all power. Oh, listen, therefore we can live beyond the norm. Let's think about something. Think about the disciples for just a minute. How many disciples followed Jesus for 33 and a half years? There was 12 of his main disciples. There was others, but we know the 12 disciples, and we understand where they were. But I want to tell you something about these 12 disciples. They followed Jesus. They listened to Jesus. They did everything in some sort of what Jesus had commanded them. They followed him. They saw him work. They saw all these things. But it wasn't until they were endued with power from on high, according to Acts chapter number 1 and verse number 8, that the Holy Spirit came down in them, that they went beyond in their faith. They understood Yes, I can rely on Jesus. He has everything. I want to tell you this morning, he's got everything. Amen. There's real life. Here's our real Christian life. Our motto here is real life, real love, real what? Savior. And when we look at that real life, real love, real Savior, here's a real Christian life. It's found in these two verses of Scripture. And when we look at our life, are these things happening in our life as a Christian, look at it with me, if you will. The Bible says, as a follower, right here in verse number 18 and verse number, or verse number 19, Go ye therefore. Wow. What are we doing as a Christian? What is the definition of a Christian? Follower of who? He said, now I want you to go as a follower of Christ. I want you to go, and here is what I want you to do. I want you to go. Because you have been saved, because you are a follower of Christ, I want you to go, and I want you to tell others you have been empowered, and I want you to do this. I want you to teach all nations. Wow. These are 11 men that are standing with Jesus, and he said, I want you to teach all the nations. 
How are they going to teach all the nations? They're going to teach all the nations by teaching one, by, and them teaching another, and them teaching another, and them teaching another. And it's a multiplication process that comes out in the church when we go, and we begin to teach one. Just teach somebody. Just tell somebody. I want to tell you what God has done in the United States of America. Y'all ready for this? God has brought the whole world to the United States of America. Every nationality around the world is represented in this country. You know what we can do? We can preach to all nations right here where we are. When we do, they have relatives back all around the world. I remember a missionary being here a, a year, uh, several years ago who came from a Muslim country, and he is a missionary with the uh, North American Mission Board, and he's teaching about uh, Mus uh, Islam and Christianity and how all, how all that uh, is, uh, uh, it, 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 how the Word uh, teaches about Islam and Christianity. And he said this. He said, I want to tell you what happened right here where you are. He had done a demographic study of our, uh, of our uh, region. He said, God brought the world to this place. Why did God do that because this is a place of the word of God. We are to teach all nations. Is there somebody you're teaching? Do you have somebody in your life today that you are teaching about who Jesus is and what Jesus can do? A Christian is to go therefore and teach. Give somebody life. Christianity is not about just being at church. I love to be at church. Amen? But who am I teaching? He said, I want you to go. I want you to teach. Then he said, I want you to baptize them. What's he say? He said, I want you to lead them in the life that is following after Christ. Show that they are a believer. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. To realize, glory to God, he is in us. He is through us. And he wants to use us. Oh, here's what he said. I love this. He said, I want you to react to the word in obedience and you do that by this simple thing he said it right here he said I am with you always that means every step that you take I am already there aren't you glad we have a savior who loves us amen knows where we are as a Christian there's two things and that is this whenever we look at the word Christian there's two things about our life number one being a Christian is to follow or number two then the word Christian was found in the book of Acts again. It was used by the, by the man named King Agrippa who, was, who rejected Jesus and was lost forever. Can I just tell you something today, friend? We're doing one or the other. We're following him or we're rejecting him. To live beyond is this. Beyond is following Jesus with a leap that sets our course to compel others and to be complete in him. You know what we can do? We can live life limitless when we follow Jesus. It is simple to eternity and beyond. Let's stand together this morning. As we conclude the series of what is a Christian, I want to ask you this morning, are you one of these who is almost persuaded? King Agrippa said, I've heard about being a Christian. I've heard about you dying on the cross. I've heard about Jesus. I've seen your life, Paul, that has changed. And I've seen everything about Christianity, but I'm almost persuaded. I'm really not willing yet to believe. Have you in your life believed? Do you know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior? Do you know Jesus that came to give you life? Have you trusted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior? Have you trusted Him? You say, Pastor, today, whenever I look at what God said in His Word about Christianity, I'm, I'm really not sure I've ever trusted Jesus. And if I died today, I'm not sure heaven will be my home. I'm not sure I'm saved. Pray for me. You just slip your hand up or come forward. I want to take God's Word and show you what God's Word says. I want to tell you something, church. I hope you can hear me this morning. I hope you can hear me well. Here's, here it is. Don't play with church membership. Don't just be at church. Listen, are, am I following Jesus? And does it look like the Bible says it should look? Maybe today you say, you know something? I'm really not sure I'm saved. Hey, we want to take God's word and show you how. Listen, if you'll just come this morning, step out and come. We want to, we want to give you God's word. I want to ask you something this morning. How long has it been since I compelled someone? Today, listen, would you come and say, God, I want you to help my compeller. God, I want you to help me. 
God, I need you to help me to compel others to come to your house, compel others to come to know Christ. Listen, would you step out and come? There's somebody in your life you need to compel. There's somebody in your life that is saying, wow, look at their life, but man, they don't have Jesus in their life. You say this morning, I need to come. I want God, I want God to use me in somebody's life to compel them to come to Christ, to compel them that they may be saved. What about my real life? How's my life really completed? It's complete when I follow God in obedience. I understand I can rely on Him. And because I can rely on Christ, He has given me that opportunity oh, to share His love and His grace with others, to live a real Christian life. Go and tell. See, i got somebody in my life today I'm praying for. I want you to help me pray for them. Would you just come? So I want to, I want to pray for that person that God would just save them work in their life. Thank you for being obedient to God. Hallelujah. Say so this morning, Pastor, in my life, there's somebody in my life I want you to help me pray for. Would you just slip your hand up as a witness, a testimony this morning? Somebody in my life that don't know Jesus. Help me pray for that person. Wow. Wow. God, help us. God, help us. Say, so Pastor, pray for me. Well, it's been, it, I, I hadn't invited anybody to even, even come to church in the last week or the last two weeks or the last month I've not been I've not been a compeller pray for me that I will compel others I want that boldness Would you just slip your hand up I want boldness in my life to compel others that they can know Christ as Savior and Lord you say this morning pastor I'm really not sure that I know Christ as my Savior pray for me would you just be honest just slip your hand up I'm not sure I'm saved pray for me pray for me hallelujah hallelujah thank you for being honest with God father we love you thank you this morning for the Word of God Thank you, Father, for what it means to be a Christian. God, for giving it to us in your word so that today our lives can be totally transformed and changed forever when we follow you. Lord, I pray right now, God, for every hand that's been lifted. Lord, we pray for those around us that don't know you, God. Help us, God, to compel them. Lord, help us, God, to have the boldness of knowing who we are in you and compel others to come that they may know you, they may trust you, they might believe in you, God. And, Lord, in their life, be changed forever because of the blood of Jesus. Father, I pray right now, God, that you would work in our lives together as a church. God, we compel them. We will be complete in you, Father, by reaching out to those who need you. Father, I pray with those this morning that don't know you as Savior and Lord of their life. God, even right now, Lord, if they call upon you, Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I believe I have sinned. God, I know that I've sinned against you. And Jesus, I believe you died for me. You was buried and you rose again. And right now, I place my faith and my trust in you. I believe you, Jesus. I trust you, Jesus. I take your word. Forgive me my sins. Lord, I'm yours. I want to follow you. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you praise this morning for your salvation. Lord, thank you for calling us out to be saved and to become a Christian. Help us to follow you every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Aren't you glad this morning how to be a Christian? Amen. Let's follow Jesus. Let's follow him first of all to Sunday school. Amen. Be a great place to start. Grab somebody by the hand and say, let's go to Sunday school. If you don't, have